Bonjour. Tout le monde. Welcome everybody. I'm Sadhu Johnston and I'm City of uh, Vancouver City Manager and I'm one of your MCs today. Et moi, je suis l'autre maître de cérémonie, Daniel Roberge, et je suis directeur d'ingénierie à la ville de Vancouver. Bienvenue à tous. We'd like to thank Carl Point and Martin Lewis for leading our procession and the traditional song. I'd like to invite Mary Charles from the Musqueam Nation to give us a blessing. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very honored and delighted to be here with you this afternoon to welcome you to our beautiful city of Vancouver where the sun always shines. <laughs> yeah, I'm Mary Charles from the Musqueam Reservation and I keep reminding people it's the only reservation in Vancouver. And uh, I've been there for 71 years and people like, do you speak the language? And I said, no. And I said, I don't know how come. I've been there for so long. I know, you know, I can tell somebody to sit down or little things like that. But anyway, thank you all so very much for being here. And as we usually do, we say a little prayer. Thank you, Great Spirit, for this new day. So much like yesterday and yet so very special. Thank you for family, friends, casual acquaintances, and strangers I meet only once. They're all part of your plan and in my life for a reason. Bless them today, Grace Spirit, as you meet their needs and guide them accordingly to your will. Let us be one with our brothers and sisters in love and peace. Make us strong mentally, physically, and spiritually to lead the way for future generations and make this world a better place to live. May all your blessings be bestowed on everyone here this afternoon. Near or far, together or apart, keep our loved ones close until we meet again. Aichka, Aichka in my dialect. Thank you, I thank you all for this great honor and I thank you all for being here and I hope I see you again one day. Thank you. All my heart. My daughter looks good care. Thank you so much. And Chantel is her granddaughter who's accompanying her today. So thank you. Aujourd'hui, nous avons le plaisir de vous présenter les trois événements majeurs de la programmation du Canada 150 plus. Our formal presentation today includes inf information about our three Canada 150 plus signature events, the Gathering of Canoes, the Drum is Calling Festival, and the Walk for Reconciliation. This will be followed by musical performance and some refreshments and conversation from this amazing civic facility. Tout d'abord, nous tenons à remercier la Galerie Bill Reed pour son soutien et son accueil chaleureux et de nous accueillir dans leur espace culturel indigène. The Bill Reed Gallery is the only public gallery in Canada which is devoted to contemporary indigenous art on the Northwest Coast. So it's fitting that we are welcomed into this unique civic facility for our unique project, Canada 150 Plus. The plus in Canada 150 Plus has multiple meanings. One of those meanings is to acknowledge that we, uh, to acknowledge Vancouver's place in the unceded homelands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil First Nations. La ville de Vancouver est située sur des terres traditionnelles non cédées de Premières Nations Moscou, Squamish et Tsleil-Waututh. Nous les remercions de nous accueillir sur leurs terres traditionnelles. Joining us are representatives from the three host nations, Chief Wayne Sparrow and Chief Maureen Thomas. Unfortunately, we, uh, Chief Ian Campbell um, it was not able to join us at the last minute due to a uh, death in the, uh, in the family. And the, and the reservation, so um, we, we are sad to not have Ian Campbell with us today. De plus, nous accueillons Joyce Murray, secrétaire parlementaire du président du Conseil du Trésor et député pour Vancouver Quadra. 
et le maire de Vancouver, Gregor Robertson. It's our pleasure to welcome Shelley Joseph, daughter of Chief Dr. Robert Joseph from Reconciliation Canada, Rhiannon Bennett, president of the Pulling Together Canoe Society, and our festival director, renowned artistic producer, Margot Kane. I'd like to thank the Government of Canada for their support and partnership, and Danielle will now invite Joyce Murray and Chief Wayne Sparrow to speak. Nous reconnaissons le soutien financier du gouvernement du Canada. Le projet La commémoration du 150e Plus du Canada, organisé par la ville de Vancouver, ne serait pas possible sans leur soutien généreux. Ainsi, nous souhaitons la bienvenue à Joyce Murray, députée pour Vancouver Quadra, et le chef de la Première Nation Moscou, Wayne Sparrow, qui prendront la parole. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Chief, um, Chief Thomas, Chief Sparrow, Mayor Gregor Robertson, other dignitaries, uh, honored guests. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here today on behalf of the Minister of Canadian Heritage and to congratulate you, the city, and your partners on this uh, important occasion on behalf of the federal government and our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. And I am pleased to be joining you here on the traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish First Nations. Canada 150 est l'occasion de mesurer le chemin parcouru jusqu'à présent tout en nous tournant avec optimisme vers l'avenir. Canada 150 is our chance to share what makes our communities from coast to coast to coast unique, diverse, and vibrant. It's also an opportunity to create new friendships among all Canadians, friendships that will remain strong long after the celebrations have ended. And as uh, Elder, uh, Elder Mary said earlier, whether those acquaintances are for the moment or for longer term, they are all precious and part of our lives. One of the four main themes for Canada 150 is our relationship with Indigenous peoples, and this theme will be woven into this year's celebrations in communities right across the country. Aucune relation n'est plus important aux yeux du gouvernement à l'heure actuelle que notre relation avec les peuples autochtones du Canada. It was on April 1st that I had the honor and privilege of attending the raising of the reconciliation poll at UBC in remembrance of the tragedies of the residential school system. Events such as that poll raising and the initiatives announced today are small but important steps on the path to full reconciliation. Our government is committed to a renewed nation-to-nation -nation partnership with Indigenous peoples, one based on recognition of rights, cooperation, and partnership. So I want to thank uh, Vancouver, the city of Vancouver, and its leadership for determining that this would be 150 plus this year. That's, uh, that's so significant. And I am uh, very proud of our city and pleased that the city is receiving $2.313 million from the Canada 150 Fund to create meaningful partnerships and activities that will celebrate the richness of Indigenous culture and help ensure that the next 150 years are marked by respect, trust, and optimism. So I commend the City of Vancouver and its many partners for this truly remarkable initiative to educate, celebrate, and entertain. I can't wait to hear more about what's in store for this 11-day celebration at Laurel Park I'm looking forward to being a part of the festivities this summer and celebrating the vibrant and beautiful tapestry of art and music of Canada's Indigenous peoples. The Government of Canada is thrilled to be a partner in this exciting project. And in closing, I want to thank the many organizers, employees, committee members, and volunteers who've worked so hard to bring about this creative and uh, exciting initiative. And to everyone involved, thanks. Thank you for your contribution to Canada 150 celebrations. Je vous remercie de votre attention. Merci. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Wayne Spurrow. I'm the elected chief of Musqueam. My trio's name is Yoke. 
It's a privilege and honor to stand in front of each and every one of you and on behalf of our community. I just want to open off by once again thanking Auntie Mary. Uh, we never let her retire. We, uh, we drag her around to uh, represent us and she does such a wonderful job. And like I said to her when we walked in the door, um, quite a few of us lost our mothers in the last year. And Auntie Mary is all of our mothers in Musqueam. So I want to thank you, Mary, for taking on so many children in Musqueam. And I'd also like to thank our uh, two nephews for um, uh, carrying on our culture and our uh, tradition. On behalf of our community, I want to take this opportunity to thank Joyce, the federal government, the city of Vancouver, and uh, all city council. Um, I've said it numerous times over the, over the past few years, um, with a lot of the uh, issues, it's the, the leadership from now the uh, federal government, provincial government, and the city taking their lead. Um, I, I have the privilege and honor to be the chief, but I have to acknowledge our past leaders that lived the horrors of the residential school, the creations of reserves and separating our families, and then the work that we've done uh, with Chief Thomas and Chief Campbell to bring our families back together put our differences aside and then try to thrive as best as First Nations people to, to accomplish those uh, goals and objectives that our past leaders did for us. And uh, uh, my job is quite easy for the, uh, now with the city, uh, Gregor, your leadership of, of um, leading us. Um, I want to, again, acknowledge uh, your leadership and our community graciously appreciates that. So, um, and I'd also like to thank our ladies, Leslie and, and Danielle, who uh, behind the scenes are always helping us coordinate and doing that. So I'm, I'm honored, uh, once again, to be our community part of it uh, with the celebration of 150. We're, as people in here know, we're First Nations people are a lot older than 150. And I'd like to thank the city for putting the plus because it's now building those relationships and trust where we can work together, which will be successful for all British Columbia, City of Vancouver, and Canadians, that we can thrive together. And now we have that ear at the table and we can work together with all uh, governments to be successful. So I'd like to enclose, uh, I know uh, Chief Campbell couldn't be here and I want to pass his regrets because as leaders, a lot of times we get called in our community to represent when we go through tragedies and a couple of times he's spoken on my behalf apologizing and I would like to take this opportunity to apologize on his behalf. Um, the culture and our teaching of our community, um, even on special events like this and uh, where we need our leaders speaking, it's what's happening in our communities that means the most to our communities and I wanna respect them for uh, following his teachings and culture. Aichka, thank you. Thank you both for your words and your presence and your partnership. Really great to have you here with us. Now I would like to welcome Vancouver <laughs> Mayor Gregor Robertson. Good day everyone. It's great to see you all here and a big thanks to the Bill Reed Gallery team for hosting us, uh, welcoming us here. And it's heartwarming to see so many people here to celebrate the, the launch and kickoff of Canada 150 plus here in Vancouver. Thanks, Andy Mary, for getting us started again. Uh, and to uh, to our Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh leaders, elders, kids, thank you so much uh, for sharing your incredible homelands here with all the rest of us and, and continually reminding us of uh, the importance of our relationship and, and deepening that. And we have a great opportunity to do that. As uh, we, we start, we're gonna hear a lot more of this through the course of the afternoon. Uh, what will what will uh, progress through the year, but this summer we have incredible celebrations in front of us. And I, I want to first just acknowledge uh, those electeds that I serve with here in the city. Uh, members of council are here, Councillor Andrea Reimer, Councillor Melissa DiGenova, Councillor Tim Stevenson, and uh, Councillor Adrian Carr is here. Any other council members? Gotcha. Okay, welcome to uh, members of council. of our, our park board as well. Uh, Commissioner Michael Weeb is here, the chair, and uh, Sarah Kirby Young, uh, Commissioner Catherine Evans as well, and maybe uh, Aaron Shum, Commissioner, maybe here as well. 
Thank you for joining us. We also have uh, Vancouver School Board, elected Vancouver School Board uh, Trustee Janet Fraser, I believe is here as well too. So thanks to all of you for, uh, for being here to represent. So uh, we have uh, some big celebrations in store for us and I, I have to take this moment to thank the federal government for the partnership with us on this. They um, have stepped up very significantly uh, in ways that we haven't seen for many years to help support the celebration and, and to uh, respect the way we want to approach this here in partnership of Musqueam, Squamish, Squamish Lewitith and, and the City of Vancouver. And I think it's, uh, it speaks volumes. Uh, we, we have a lot of work to do together, but when you enable us and, and invest at this level, it's very important for us. So thanks to Joyce uh, and to your colleagues in the federal government, uh, elected and staff who make all this possible. And we, um, we uh, are very focused right now as a city of reconciliation. We take uh, that uh, seriously in all that we do and celebrating is part of that, fortunately. We, we uh, are going to make a big deal out of the activities this summer. We have uh, worked through some uh, much more difficult times, uh, working through the very challenging troubles of our past here, the racism and discrimination, the, the history of residential schools and oppression that uh, our First Nations here and urban, urban Aboriginal people in Vancouver have faced for generations now. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the work that's been done by Reconciliation Canada and many of the different organizations uh, and, and individuals uh, leading to bring change. And a lot of that has been difficult work. There's been a lot of, uh, a lot of pain and sorrow and acknowledging that, that very, very tough history. This summer, I think we, we get to turn that around a lot more and, and really celebrate the strength that we have all together now and the really bright future and the opportunities that we have. So I'm, uh, we've, we've started to build on these positives. We just uh, the other day opened the Natsamats Library in Strathcona, which is uh, first the first city uh, building like that that has a, uh, a local name, a First Nations name, which is very appropriate and we have a whole a, a real commitment now with the, the Canada 150 plus uh, place names project and making sure that we're getting all those names that have been forgotten and, and in some cases lost and, and found again but certainly forgotten to uh, most of us who live here now we want to bring those names back and make sure uh, we're, we're giving appropriate name and recognition to places that have held those names for countless generations that's a piece of work that's in, uh, in progress right now so this uh, signature events, and Sadhu mentioned them right off the top, the Gathering of Canoes, the Drum is Calling Festival, the Walk for Reconciliation uh, 2.0. The first walk was, uh, I know, an incredible experience for very many of us, 70, 75,000 plus of us who walked in the pouring rain. And, and uh, again, the, maybe the more difficult side of the, of the cycle that we've been through, uh, the tears from the sky, and this year hopefully that walk is in bright sunshine and, and really celebrating uh, the future that we have together. So I know uh, we have a great opportunity as a city to celebrate uh, and to share this incredible abundance of uh, our Aboriginal culture here with people from all over the world. It's something we have so strong here. We have underplayed it. We, we have a great opportunity to bring it forward and, and celebrate and highlight this as a, a really important and integral part of who we are in Vancouver. And I know it, it will serve us well in uh, the generations to come here, and it'll also serve the, the world well to see a city of so many different cultures recognizing our indigenous roots and, and growing them uh, together with all of us who are gathered here and the newcomers who join us. So again, thanks to all of you who've made this possible. Lots of people around this room that are carrying important parts to make this 150 plus celebration very special and, and very powerful. And I thank each and every one of you for your commitment to do that. Merci à tous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. Please welcome now Tsleil-Waututh Chief Maureen Thomas and uh, Shelley Joseph, who, will, uh, as I mentioned, will speak about uh, one of our signature events, the Walk for Reconciliation. I too would like to thank you all for being here to share this day with us. I especially want to thank 
the city of Vancouver for always including our First Nation communities here within the area. It is very heartwarming for us to be looked at in through those eyes of respect and the acceptance of who we are as First Nations within this territory. My hands could never go up enough to thank you and your community. Today is the first day of the rest of our life. And when you look at it in that context, and when you look at life, and I look at all of you around us, the value of life and how we need to really appreciate each other and all that surrounds us, the life of the animals, the fish, the birds, everything is so important. And this opportunity of Canada 150 gives us the opportunity to truly celebrate who we are, all of us, together. And what Canada means to all of us. Every one of you have a different history. No one has a less history than those of us that are all here. Everyone is important. Everyone is of value. And I truly, truly want to acknowledge all of you for who you are and who you represent and what you mean to this country and what you bring to Canada. Today, we stand before you with one heart, one mind, in bringing forward this 150 celebration, which is truly a celebration of life and our home. And there is nothing more important to any one of us than that, our life, our families, our home. So I really want to acknowledge again, the federal government, the city of Vancouver, Musqueam, Squamish, my community, to Tsleil-Waututh, for coming together to really celebrate. Thank you. My traditional name is Hekwagil Ogwa. I'm the youngest daughter of Chief Robert Joseph of the uh, Gwawinok tribe of the Kwakwakiwak people. I want to first say thank you to um, the drummers and our elder for the prayer for grounding us in a really good way and calling our ancestors to walk with us today. I think that's really important to remember our ancestors. Um, thanking the city and the government for uh, giving way for these initiatives to happen here in Vancouver. I currently work with Reconciliation Canada as the public outreach lead and the cultural advisor. Reconciliation Canada was born of a vision that my father had. Uh, he's a residential school survivor. He went for 11 years. And he had a vision of people walking through the city of Vancouver in the spirit of unity. An amazing vision that includes all Canadians. At Reconciliation Canada, we strive to create safe spaces for people to come together to share and to feel heard. Creating new relationships based on understanding respect, and namuyut, which means we are all one. We believe that in moving forward from that space, all together, is how lasting reconciliation can be achieved. It is our hope that this will ensure that all our children will grow up in a new era of celebrating our diversity, of celebrating our common humanity, of celebrating one another's resiliency, of lifting one another up to reach our optimum potential. Four years ago, in this great city, in the city of reconciliation, over 70,000 people came together to walk for reconciliation. And it was indeed, I think, the wettest day ever here in Vancouver. <laughs> that was just the beginning. This will be another step in the right direction to grow reconciliation like never before here in Canada. So, on September 24th, join us for the next Walk for Reconciliation. Let's walk together to create a new way forward. Big is my love for all of you.
Alors, merci à vous deux. Nos prochains invités vous présenteront les deux autres événements majeurs du Canada 150 Plus, qui sont le Rassemblement des canaux et certainement l'événement le plus attendu, le Festival de la Paix du Tambour. Please welcome Rhiannon Bennett, President of the Pulling Together Canoe Society and our Festival Director, a 2015 Mayor's Arts Award honoree, Margot Kane. Uh, my dear friends and relatives, it gives me really good feelings to see all of you here today. I just raise my hand to Auntie Mary for opening the floor and to our drummers and our, our young ones here. It's so important uh, to see the young ones coming and learning. Uh, that's how we've always uh, taught our people, so it just really warms my heart to see our, our practices uh, right here in life today still. And raise my hands you know, to our, our representatives are here and our chiefs, so thank you very much. Um, so pulling together, we've quietly been working on reconciliation for many years now. Our first journey was in 2001. And I'm really excited uh, to hear about the initiative that the City of Vancouver is doing with their 150, 150 plus. It's, it's in perfect alignment with our mission. And our mission of our society is recognizing the past by pulling together to enhance understanding between public service agencies and Aboriginal peoples by canoeing the traditional highways to strengthening our future relations. Every year on the journey, I'm always moved when I see the canoes come in or when I'm out on the water. To be out on the water with public service agencies and Indigenous people is one of the most powerful things. That water is such strong medicine and it is very humbling. When we are all in those canoes together, pulling together, we must be not Samat. We must be of one heart and one mind or those canoes don't go. One of the things that always strikes me every year on the journey is I always have a moment where I stop and I look and I see large gatherings of Indigenous people and mixed in amongst the crowd are the police. And I think that it wasn't in that long ago of a distant past where the police would have come and arrested all of us for gathering because there's more than three of us standing together. So the fact that we are at a point in history now where those officers are taking off their uniforms and getting into the canoes with us, and we are learning together and sharing each of our cultures, is really powerful. It was the police who came into our communities and took our children to schools. It was the Indian agents who came and kept making sure that we didn't leave our reserves. So the fact that our organization exists is a, is a huge monument to the initiatives that people have had to make sure that we're going forward in a more meaningful way. It is really important to our society that we do talk about the past and we do acknowledge the atrocities that happen, but we learn from them and we know that we are going forward. And the vision of our society is to be leaders in the elimination of prejudice and stereotypes. So I'm really proud to be here today to bring greetings from the Pulling Together Canoe Society and to be partners with the gathering of canoes for Vancouver's 150 plus. The City of Vancouver has been a long supporter of pulling together the Vancouver Police Department and so has the Collingwood Neighborhood House and Musqueam, we have just recently joined as well. So I'm really proud that within the City of Vancouver we have all of this work that's quietly going on where people are actually getting to talk about reconciliation and to have those tough conversations and to heal and to move forward together. So I'm really looking forward to coming ashore uh, this, this summer with uh, 29 approximately other canoes and to be there coming into my territory along with our shared partners, our, uh, our neighbors of Squamish and tsleil And I'm really excited to be greeted on the shore by so many people from the city of Vancouver. It's, uh, we are really moving forward to make sure that our organization is making more waves and more ripples in society for reconciliation. And I'm really proud that we've been able to I have this platform to share the work that we've been doing for the last 17 years. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Margot Cave, 
Chris Soto from Alberta originally. And I enjoy living and working on Coast Salish territories for the past 35 years. I'm also the Artistic Managing Director of Full Circle First Nations Performance and the Talking Stick Festival. But today I'm proud to greet you as the Artistic Director of the Drum is Calling Festival. The festival begins with a three-host First Nations Welcome Day and closes with a large-scale celebration of all our relations. Daily themes will orient us to the importance of our families and relations, beginning with our elders, our women, our youth, our warriors and allies, and will encourage us to not only celebrate the artistic offerings of live song, dance, story and poetry, but will also showcase demonstrations, workshops, and artisans' offerings to enjoy. The artistic direction of the festival has been a collective experience as we ensure that many voices are heard at the table, and as a result on the many stages of this festival. A curatorial advisory of artists and community cultural workers assist in the process of bringing ideas and companies and artists to the curatorial process. It is with great pleasure that as Artistic Director of the Drummers Calling Festival, I am joined by a BC Curatorial Advisory consisting of Rebecca Duncan, storyteller and language teacher from the Squamish Nation, Am Jo Hall, Director of SFU's Van City Office of Community Engagement, Janet Rogers, spoken word artist, broadcaster, and past poet laureate of Victoria. And Jolene Mitten, fashionista, basketball player, and founder of All My Relations Entertainment. Along with the team at the City of Vancouver and Brand Live Management Group, we are curating a multidisciplined nine-day festival that will not only feature Indigenous performances and art artisans, but allies, friends, and artists from other cultural and artistic communities in Vancouver, BC, and beyond. The Drum is Calling Festival team has brought together a strong and exciting lineup of evening headline performers, including but not limited to Buffy St. Marie, Shane Poison, DJ Shub, Chantel Previazic, William Prince, Kenny Starr, Sierra Noble, Tom Jackson, Leela Gilday, the Jerry Cans, Midnight Shine, Crystal Shawanda, and many, many more. Join us for two evenings with literary giant Thompson Highway and friends, who will contemplate the history of indigenous writers across Canada and read excerpts from their most iconic and most recent works. These two nights, presented in partnership with the Vancouver Writers' Fest, will bring together some of your favorite Indigenous authors and highlight Thompson's upcoming release, From Oral to Rim, a celebration of Indigenous literature in Canada. The Kanata Festival will feature a number of iconic traditional housing forms that will serve as spaces for music, art, workshops, and performances by Indigenous people from across Canada. Kanata, Iroquoian for village, will also launch the Wikipedia app, a location-based Indigenous knowledge network. Attend the first annual Indigenous Fashion Week in Vancouver. The brainchild of former international model Jolene Mitten, the four nightly shows, the first opening on our drum site, and three subsequent shows being held at the Queen Elizabeth Theatre Lobby will feature the superstars, and emerging artists of Indigenous fashion design and modeling. The Canadian, the Canada 150 Plus team is proud to announce that Montreal-based ATSA, When Art Takes Action, will return to Vancouver for the Drummers Calling Festival with their powerful installation, Wild Having Soup. During Canada 150 Plus, ATSA will engage Indigenous and non-Indigenous Vancouverites in face-to-face -face conversation on a variety of relevant and charged topics. Canada 150 Plus sees some Canadians celebrating 150 years of confederation, while others seek to shine light on the generational trauma 
resulting from systemic and intentional indigenous assimilation policies with Resist 150. This presents an opportunity to create direct ties between human beings, each person contributing his or her own story to the Canada 150 Plus Resist 150 narrative. Over the amount of time it takes to consume a bowl of soup, each participant engages in a three-course dialogue. The installation builds a collection of many personal encounters and provides opportunity to build bridges rather than walls. Drums over the Salish Sea. We are excited to engage Sal Pereira in directing a cross-cultural collaborative drumming event on the Thursday of our festival, featuring, among many others, the Smoky Valley Powo drummers with hoop dancer Alex Wells, the Uzumi Taiko drummers, the Kunda African arts dancers and drummers, and Aki Brazil drummers and martial arts dancers. We're really looking forward to seeing you all at our festival. We've got a lot on our plates, and I'm so very grateful to have the many people that are assisting in ensuring that our Indigenous and non-Indigenous artists' voices will be heard. And you are all welcome to join us every day at that nine-day festival if you have the stamina. <laughs> all my relations. Thank you so much. Well, that's an exciting lineup, is it not? Yeah. Well done. Well done. Yeah. I've heard it so many times, but it just put it in a whole different context. So, uh, well done, Margo, uh, framing it up for us and Rhiannon. Uh, you've put together an exciting lineup, and we're grateful for your artistic vision and your leadership in this once in a lifetime festival and opportunity. Alors, nous encourageons tous les gens de Vancouver à nous se joindre à nous au mois de juillet. Et aussi, nous tenons à remercier nos partenaires du festival. Our Canada 150 Plus partners play an invaluable role in supporting our programming and operations of the Drum is Calling Festival, and we'd like to offer our deepest thanks to them. Our major partners, Shaw Communications Inc., for their support of kids and youth programming, and LG 104.3 for their support of main stage music programming. Our festival partners, Aboriginal Community Career Employment Services Society and Van City, supporting the Aboriginal Production Apprenticeship Program. Tim Hortons for supporting the volunteer program, as well as the Downtown Business Improvement Association, NFB, Cassian, and Integral Light Studio. And our media partners, Metro News, Global BC, and Daily Hive. Thank you to all of our partners. We also have the privilege of working with many civic community and employer partners for Canada 150 Plus. While they are too many to name here, you can see them, uh, you can see our partners acknowledged on the boards displayed along the gallery walls. And before we proceed with uh, our um, ribbon cutting, I would like to take a moment just to acknowledge the many city staff that have led this. It's been a uh, real effort for them to think so creatively and bring in so many partners and it's been led by Wendy Yao and in particular I'd like to acknowledge Mark Specht who is here. Mark, thank you for your leadership. Okay, we're going to see how sharp our scissors are now for this event. Can we have our eight speakers please stand for a ceremonial cutting? So this Salish weaving represents people coming together from four directions. Everyone moving forward together. Okay, we are...
done with our celebration today, and uh, it is a very special day for a number of reasons, and one of which is that we have a very special birthday today. <laughs> may, not, uh, may not be only for this, but uh, please join me in celebrating, wishing a uh, happy birthday to Chief Wayne Sparrow. We'd like to uh, sing. toward reconciliation. <laughs> <laughs> We're really back right here, people. <laughs> so, um, thank you all for joining me with that. I was, I was nervous that I was going to be the only one singing there for a moment. <laughs> you would not have liked. Okay, we are um, excited now to, uh, as we wrap up, to present one of our performing groups from the Drum is Calling Festival lineup. Sister Says is from right here in Vancouver. Jillian and Robert Thomas's cultural roots are mixed Haida. It's a Mishayim. I hope I got that. Did I get that right? Sim Shen? Thank you. Okay. But their musical roots are the soul, blues, and pop music they listened to as kids. Akayo Maitna, Sister Says. Yeah, we're really excited to be here. Um, Rob's just tuning up here. We also have uh, Trevor Ainsworth on percussion here. He's kind of like our, um, he's like adopted into our family basically. <laughs> he's just, he's always, he was always at our house when we were kids, so. Um, yeah, first song we're gonna do is called Her Place. 